Good evening. We gather as a community of faith, the Church of St. Bartholomew the Apostle, on this Sunday of fifth Sunday of Easter. We offer a warm welcome to all who are visiting from other parishes or from outside the local area. We are happy you can join us at this Eucharist. Please stand and find someone you do not know and take a moment to extend a warm welcome to St. Bartholomew. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, Sing a New Church. Someone by the God who made us, reaching to university, gathered in the name of Jesus, preachers in unity. from the water of the holiness and light male and female in God's image male and female God's delight lead us the goodness of creation, trust the spirit strong within, dare to dream the vision promised, sprung from seed of what has been, lead us bring the gifts that differ, but it's blended what is ways, sing a new church into everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus be with all of you again during this Easter season we always return to the font where our life with God began God's life moving in and through us and so when we bless ourselves with holy water or we're sprinkled with it we're recommitting ourselves to our baptismal promises to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. And so, God, we thank you for the gift of water, that which brings life to us, you who bring life to us. As we are sprinkled with this, may we recommit ourselves to following your way. We ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to peace.
Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Earlier in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear of Saul, later known as Paul, persecuting Christians in Jerusalem. When he went to Damascus to do more of the same, he experienced a dramatic conversion. It was several years before he returned to Jerusalem, the site of his earlier persecutions. His first visit to Jerusalem as a Christian is described in today's reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord.
During this Easter season, we are reading from the first letter of St. John. In today's passage, the author is dealing with some members of the community who have defected. They seem to have believed that as long as you have faith in Jesus, it doesn't matter what you do in daily life. The author directly refutes that position. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. This is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it will bear more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Mayan Aman. Okay. So let's 
remember one thing as I get into the, the scriptures, especially about Jesus today, that St. Paul, before he was Paul, was Saul, and he was a murderer. He was gathering up people who were Jewish, but believed in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so it was his job as a, a Pharisee, as one of the leading Jews, to gather them up, take them to prison, have them killed. And he changed because Jesus himself came into his life. Now, having said that, we hear Jesus saying to us in the scriptures today that remaining in him, remaining in Christ. Well, what does that mean? What is, who is the Christ that we re want to remain in? So I'm going to take two gospel stories. One is the story of the woman caught in adultery, dragged before Jesus, the leaders, bringing her before him and saying, she's a sinner, and our law says that she should be stoned to death. And what does Jesus do? He doesn't judge her. Instead, he speaks words of love to her. He saves her when he says, you know, you were at that without sin, throw the first stone. He sh shares love with her. He shows that God is merciful and kind. Another story is the story of Jesus, the Jesus the Christ that I'd like to emphasize again tonight. He's at a party. And parties sometimes have alcohol at them, right? Sometimes? At least the parties I go to. I don't know about your parties. <laughs> but they ran out of wine. So Jesus and his friends are having a great time and they run out of wine. And so what does he do? He changes water into wine at the request of his mom. So what does he do? He's, in, he's welcoming, having a good time, welcoming hospitality, because that's what this was about, hospitality. So we have Jesus promoting and building hospitality, and we have Jesus showing mercy and forgiveness and love. That's the Jesus that we're called to remain in. And so we hear this whole thing about vines and branches. So, if we're going to remain in him, what are parts of us that may not be like him? Where we may be inhospitable, maybe unkind, even to people in our own families. We're called to be like him, remain in him. Be like me is what it means to remain in him. Be welcoming, be kind, be hospitable. That means here as we gather, and that means with others. The second part, though, the part about being judgmental, where Jesus is not being that. He's being merciful and kind and revealing the love of God. Are there parts of us that are judgmental? I hear story after story, story after time about, because um, I'm not on it, Facebook. Is there something called the forum? It's where people write in and apparently blast one another behind the, the, the facade of Facebook. But this can happen not just on Facebook. It can happen in life. It can happen behind people's backs where we're not being non-judgmental. So there's those two aspects. If we're going to remain in Christ, he asks us to be like him to be welcoming, people of hospitality. And he wants us to be people who are without judgment, people who are not ripping other people apart, either on social media or behind people's backs. That's what he calls us to be, to remain in him. And that's where he says, if there's parts of us that need to be pruned, then come to him. If there are parts of us that are not like him, then they need to be pruned so that we can grow to be more like him. Now, how do we do that? It means we talk to God. It means we go to confession. It means say, here I am, God. I'm not very warm and welcoming to people. Or here I am, God. I'm extremely judgmental and gossipy about people. If that rings a bell for you, or if there's other aspects from other stories of the gospel that reflect who Jesus is to remain in him, ask for his help. Go to confession. 
ask for that grace and strength not only to be forgiven, but to change, to be pruned. Let's just take a quiet moment. And let's present ourselves to the Lord. Because God knows we're saints and sinners. And if there's aspects of ourselves that are not in line with him, or we're not like him, remaining in him, let's ask him for his grace to change. Let's ask him for his help to become more like him. Let's just take a quiet moment. Let's do that with our God right now. Sisters and brothers, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Coming to the Lord, who loves us so much, Let's trust him with our lives. Let's bring our needs and concerns to him. Our response is, Riven, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that our faith may deepen, our hope be strengthened, and our love abound as we draw our life from Christ, we pray. Risen, Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians of every church and denomination, that these various branches of the true vine may increase in unity and their members may find common ground, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and unrest, especially in Haiti, Ukraine, Palestine, and Israel that the Prince of Peace may inspire human hearts to turn from bloodshed and violence and work together for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel cut off from God, from friends, or from their true <coughs> selves, that God will guide them to new connections in their lives and help to offer them love and acceptance, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who received the sacrament of confirmation this weekend, that the Holy Spirit may remain within them, inspiring their hearts and hands to holiness and serving God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that our Heavenly Father may welcome them home to his eternal kingdom. We remember especially Joseph Fantini and Joseph Hudzik. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. As it happened in Cana, where Mary went to Jesus and asked him to change, to do something about the lack of wine, let's come to her and ask for her intercession in our lives. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is one collection today. Envelopes for Catholic home missions should be placed in the basket with your regular weekly offering. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, By Our Love. sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name. Our Lord and Lord of all his church. O God who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the, pre the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we've been taught by the Savior, the Christ, let us now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Will the Eucharistic minister who's bringing communion to the sick and homebound please come forward? As you go, bring with you not only the sacrament we celebrated, John, share also the word of God. Guarantee our prayers, our love. Please ask for prayers for us in return. Go in peace. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. God.